Well, like I said, I'm excited to be here with you guys. Uh, we got Grace and Matt Rapius here. They're actually, you guys are based out of Philadelphia, is that right? That's right. Awesome. Well, we're really uh, happy to have you guys on. Uh, we're live in the MagMod community. So if you guys are seeing this on YouTube and you'd like to follow these, uh, be sure to check us out in the MagMod community on Facebook. And you can see more of these live videos uh, with other photographers. So we've done a few of these in the past. I'm not sure if you guys got to see the one with Raf or Crystal. Um, yeah. I think you guys are the third one. So we had a couple technical difficulties getting started, but I appreciate you guys' patience and, and uh, hanging with us so we could do this. Um, what we've done, guys, for those who haven't seen one of these in the past, what we do with these is we actually uh, talk to some photographers that are extremely talented, uh, such as Matt and Grace. Yeah, I absolutely love you guys' work. Um, and just let them talk about maybe five or six images that they've created, uh, talk about some of the modifiers that they've used in that work, and maybe explain you know, what was going through their mind or how they created that shot. So with that, uh, I want to ask you guys first, I mentioned you're in Philadelphia. Can you just tell us maybe if somebody wanted to find more about your work, where they can discover you? Yeah, your website, um, Instagram, Facebook, that kind of stuff? So our website is www.rightstartphotography.com. Um, on our Instagram is really just pictures of our dog in our house, so you won't find our work there, but you'll definitely find about us there. Um, our our handle is at Right Start Photo, um, and then our Facebook is just facebook.com slash Right Start Photography. Excellent. That's awesome. Well, thank you. So you got pictures of your house and your dog on Instagram, is that what you said? Do you guys, do you guys use Instagram for business? No, not really. <laughs> That's Probably awesome. Should. Every now and then, but really... No. <laughs> hey, I, if whatever works for you, right? I mean, that's I, I think that's awesome that you guys. The thing is, you guys obviously are staying busy, and and your work is, like I said, is amazing. So that's what we really want to talk about. But uh, so we got Grace and we got Matt. Now, is there one person that that is the shooter and one person the handles the posing or the lighting or kind of tell me a little bit about your dynamics and and what you guys how you do your work? Yeah. Why don't you start with what you do in terms um, of what you bring to the yeah so for me I am I'm super natural light actually I love if I go to shoot an engagement session myself um, you, you've got all of the golden hour light you know flare and yeah. all of these things that Matt absolutely hates um, and so it's <laughs> a, it's a cool way to kind of bridge the gap between two different styles um, for me I'm more elementary in my lighting abilities um, I certainly you know learn a ton from being around Matt um, but my main goal is you know when we're working for an engagement session or something for example um, usually we'll only have one camera uh, mm -hmm. and what I try to do is kind of coach our couple through um, posing and interactions and, and trying to get real authentic moments from them while yeah. Matt um, now we'll toss the camera between each other, you know, Matt, I see this, or he's, sees something that I don't see. Um, but for the most part, uh, when it comes to lighting, essentially, especially, um, that is Matt's genius. Like a good example, like, um, if we start off with a very simple standard portrait or posing, um, Grace will go and look to see the different angle or different, um, shot from a different place uh, while I'm taking the straight on shot. Then she'll to go and take some more, um, the closer up details, uh, different angle while I go out and I look for even something, different, a, little something a little bit more bold or edgy that may not even work. Or the light is only, or the sunlight is only going to be good for the next 90 seconds. Um, so we have to, to move quickly. Um, yeah. We go right, th right we go through our, like our playbook of poses and pick, you know, you know, top three or four that work for that. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll pick this one for this one, or we'll pick this one for the next, for the, this one and um, do it real quickly. We have a pace um, that we find that <laughs> some, some, both clients and other vendors struggle with when it comes to, to our work days. Um, and that we, I, I feel like we're talentless hacks and that we're just like throwing it together as fast as we can. If we're not throwing no, it together as fast as we can, we're not doing our job. And there, there isn't yeah. like looking at a, a cheat sheet table of, well, I should melt, I should have this at three feet and at this angle and yeah. is, you know, do I have this at the right settings and going through the math, but it's just run and gun as fast as we can. Um, and try to, to even when there's no can. rush, even like, when there's no rush too. We have <laughs> and we're done in 20 minutes. Um, if 
that's the way we work best. I feel like we get the most authenticity out of our couples that way when I don't give them a second to think about how dumb they actually feel standing there looking at each other. Um, we've, we've started to develop a lot more as we get to know our couples. Um, you know, Matt will be shooting, for example, and I will start to prompt them and ask them, like, without looking at each other, without looking at me, uh, which one of you is messier? Which one of you takes longer to get ready? And usually that elicits a good natural reaction of laughter or something like that that really is authentic to them. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, 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 I think a lot of photographers are that way as well because uh, sometimes when you do go slow and you take that time, sometimes it almost feels like there's this this – moments of silence and things where it's just kind of an awkward silence where everyone's waiting and I think that was actually one of my favorite things that when I started using I went from using large lights down to speed lights was just that having that quickness and that you know um, less time setting up big lights and things like that not that big lights don't have their their function um, but that was one thing I really enjoyed now how how long I being that we're in the magmod community I'm sure I'm just kind of curious how long have you guys been using magmod modifiers in your work is it something that you recently adopted or have you been using it for a few years or no so we we first uh, got introduced to magmod at WPPI um, in right when when it was when magmod was a baby and uh -huh. started using them to replace their existing hardware which if I'm allowed to say is was by Expo Imaging. Um, uh -huh. And that transition from from two grips and the bare basics of a couple of grids, a couple of bells, no colors, and to just the, the full kit for up to like I think what up to six to ten lights now. We would plus we have stock <laughs> in the in the studio of extras uh, to to, to nope. go whenever. That's awesome. And have you found, Matt, because, I mean, you, you specifically handling the lighting, have you found that having those Magmod modifiers and being able to switch it up, has that, that helped a lot? Yes. If, if you compare Magmod to any or most of the competitors out there, you find that most competitors have a system of you know, some sort of Velcro or spring strap or something that or duct tape or or duct tape <laughs> you know, something that it does not something that requires tension to be applied to the flash and that doesn't always hold and because mm -hmm. uh, things are elastic and Velcro tend to stretch over time it gets yeah. looser or break down or if they're made from like a nylon they the threads start to unravel and um, it, it it can either disintegrate like um, some of our older stuff just disintegrated after a long time, or they just became so loose and obsolete that um, they didn't. And I will work. say too, we're probably one of the roughest photographers on our gear that I know. We're abusive. We're bad. bad. We're, we're it's the, really we're, bad. We're one of like the worst. throwing things, you know, I got to get this out of the screen. Just throw it. Perfect example. What happened this weekend? Uh, yeah, we were getting on a golf <laughs> cart. And I'm, I'm sitting there. The videographer's getting on. He's like. Let's everyone wait to make sure that my gear is on. It's protected. And I look back, and Matt's camera's rolling down the hill. It just slipped out. <laughs> I, 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 We're back. I had new gloves on. It just slipped out of my hands. And just uh, face, so face on its back. We needed something that was going to stand up to that. And I yeah. will say, you know, the rubber in the Magmod, it, I shouldn't advertise this, but the rubber in the Magmod has saved our butts a few times when, you know, the wind took it over, and it landed on concrete, and... Um, we've never broken a flash. Cross your fingers. Um, yeah. Magma, I think you would probably understand this from where you are. Um, I was bold enough, well, not bold, dumb enough to uh, to <laughs> try to, to attack Choya with with a with a magmod, and nice. yeah, and uh, it got stuck, and uh, I and we had to enlist the help of a local to help remove yeah. it, which was embarrassing a bit so <laughs> that's funny yeah i i definitely know choi out here in arizona it's awful it's awful stuff the devil's work. <laughs> so, well no that that's that's awesome i i i completely understand as far as the uh, protecting the flashes i've had a few of my flashes fall over in the past and it is funny how it, it it seems like it always tends to hit that kind of the rubber sides there on the on the flash obviously we don't want anyone to try that but but uh it has seemed to protect my flashes as well so i know and you do with um Magbot has actually helped us for in a different way. Um, as we, if your Magbot users know that how the grip fits onto the top of any of 
just about any speed light, how there, there's a good amount of tension between there. Uh -huh. well, we broke one of our flashes at the base where it would mount to a, to a shoe. Uh -huh. And it was broken for almost a whole year. But the flash itself was functional for that whole time. So we flipped it upside down and used the grip to, to attach it to a piece of metal that was part <laughs> of another you know, flash assembly to, to, to hold it together. And that's hilarious. That, so that piece of rubber was hold, was our savior for a while before yeah. I decided to fix it. So you guys have MacGyvered stuff together with, with mag mods and flashes, huh? <laughs> that's awesome. On the wedding day. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Hey guys, I know, um, I, like I mentioned in the beginning that you guys have some incredible images and I would love if we can share some of those with uh, those who are viewing and those who will see this video later on and maybe just talk about some of those images and, and what was going through your mind as you guys were creating those. So, um, I'm going to let you take it from your side. What, uh, what would you like to pull up first? I'm going to go with this one. Can you see that? Uh, it's loading right now. Oh yes. Bridesmaids. I love yes. this shot. Um, so this was probably the most technically difficult image that I think we have ever pulled off in the shortest amount of time. Um, it was cool. The, all the bride wanted was great pictures, uh, you know, feeling like it was golden hour, feeling like, you know, light, airy, um, and it poured the whole day. So Ooh. we had to, yeah, we had to come up with something quick. Yes, we're coming in behind us for cocktail hour. We had about three minutes to create these series of images for them. Um, just the bride, just the groom, the full bridal party, and then just them. Um, a couple of things that I really like about this image, and that's kind of really unique, that make people stop and say, whoa, um, you can kind of see up on the right our settings the, that this was shot at F1.4. Um, mm. which is a little bit different. I, we get a lot of questions on, you know, well, how is everyone in focus? How did that work? So it's really, it, it's a good testament to our equipment and understanding that, um, to just kind of show you that as long as everyone is in the same plane of focus, that it, it can work. And it's Absolutely. A tough, tough shot to do in any event because one four, it's, you know, one in four of them are actually going to be in focus while, and you have to combine that with the fact that everyone has to be looking and smiling at the same time. So I had to be over overshoot the situation. So where I would normally have taken maybe, you know, four to eight shots of this, I had to do twice as many to get to achieve the same results. You know, one thing that really stands out for me in this image, you guys, is the fact that you have there's a separation light behind the the, the bridesmaids. Um, in other words, you get this great light on them. It's balanced perfectly with the ambient light, um, you know, of the room. So you're not blowing it out or making it too dark, but then you have this nice separation light as well. Can you tell us what light you use to set up in the front as well as in the back? Perfectly. I will, uh, be able to do, <laughs> um, this is a three light setup, I believe. Um, if I remember or recall from when there's a shot, I think September, October, yeah. whatever. Um, we have, I think this was, I had a two stands at uh, 45 degrees to my left and right, um, providing our, our key lighting. Um, one of them had a Westcott Rapid box, and I think that's from the left, and the right was a um, flash with a grid with a, with a, gel with a gel diffusion plus another gel for this uh, CTO um, in the room, which I think I'm using half CTO for everything in here. Um, okay. I might, I might be using a full CTO for, um, for the backlight. Um, but I, the powers for the, for the key liner were around about half power um, mm -hmm. to really overcome the darkness that was in there. Uh, there were, there was some window light, um, from behind me and where they're facing, but it wasn't as nice as I had hoped. Um, so I wanted to overcome that and really add, be in control of all the lighting my, from my perspective. From behind and attached to the railing, uh, as far back as you could see in the uh, from the second level, have a uh, impact, um, what they call a super clamp, mounted right to the, uh, to the railing with the flash head with one grid CTO or a full CTO. And that was probably a full power. 
firing to give the the uh, backlight, which I wanted to be a little bit warmer. I wanted the whole image to, to look a little warm because everything at this location was warm. It said warm, warm, warm. And the last thing I wanted to do was have all this warm and then one cool light because it wasn't gelled or wasn't uh, didn't have enough of the CTO. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And using those gels, you're basically able to, not only were you able to use your flashes to balance with the ambient in the room, but you're able to use the gels to kind of balance with that, that, that color um, of the room, you know, and not, not change the color of those uh, fixtures that are hanging, you know, behind them and stuff. I like that. Um, Matt, you had mentioned the, the, you had clamped it to the railing. Are you talking about the railing that's on that second floor there? Is that the one you had the flash, like literally right behind the bride's head, maybe? I yes, mean, obviously... Right. I had to, uh, at times I had to, to move left and right to get it just in the right spot, otherwise i get a starburst. Uh, but yeah, I had to mount it right there. If it was on the floor, I don't think I could have achieved the same effect. Um, mm -hmm. And I think having the grid kept uh, light loss and, and excess spray left and right, that would have uh, lit up the, the darker areas of the image uh, along yeah. the side. Um, yeah, I know for sure. I had to use even, you know, if I wasn't already at full power, I would have had to use that to to overcome the distance, which I think was about 45 feet from 45 foot throw from that distance. Gotcha. No, I, I like your point on using the grid to basically keep that light coming off that rim light from spreading all over the room and, and, and you know, from going up and to the sides and basically just aiming it right towards them. Um, and, and what was your... Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about this already, but what? Just one last question about it was: What was your thinking when you put the rim light behind them? I mean, did you shoot one with and one without, and and you know, or did you just? Is it? Are you constantly or always using some kind of rim or separation light behind your subjects? Is that second nature, or is that something that you were just trying to solve? You know, a particular problem on this photo. Well, it was something. I think it adds something extra to it. Um, I think there's something very little magical about this image. And I think adding that little bit of warm backlight helps to make the image more cohesive. Um, yeah. I will also say, um, I think part of the motivation for us too was that the bride talked to us about wanting that golden hour feel um, mm -hmm. and being so disappointed that it was pouring and she didn't feel like her wedding day was warm. I know that sounds kind of weird, but you know, um, but you know, if we're out shooting in fields and, and things like that, like we did for their engagement session, um, you kind of lose that feel. And so for this, it really looks like the sun is almost streaming in through those big windows behind them, um, if you wouldn't know any better. And so that was a big deal for her. Um, and the series of shots that we were able to take throughout that the other thing is that she actually spent more on her veil than she did on her dress. She had a celebrity designer come in and design it custom for her. And so by putting that um, light on the railing, we were able to light up her veil, you know, when it was just her or just her and her groom, um, yeah. a little bit better than if the light was only from the front. I love it. No, that's it. I, I, you know, and so you're telling me that when you guys shot this image, like literally it was pouring rain outside? Or those or, windows. Yeah. That that is interesting. I love how you guys basically dissected that. It you know, to a point where now it, it it even adds more value to that shot because, like you said, it's you're basically taking something that was nothing. I mean, it was dark and rainy and everything else, and you're making it you know, hey, sunshine and happy on your wedding day. So, love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Speaking of rain, one of the shots that, that you guys have done that I absolutely love is that shot of the, you know, the couple in the rain. I can see it over here on the left. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that one? Yeah. Um, this broke the internet. <laughs> it did break the internet a little bit. Um, this is Brittany, <laughs> one of our coolest couples ever. They, they were just fantastic to work with. Um, when we first shot this, um, I like to shoot a little behind the scenes every now and then. Um, and the one thing that people couldn't believe is that this was shot in broad daylight in the middle of the day. Um, so, you know, you take your normal rain shot mentality that it has to be a night shot, that it has to be done a certain way, and you kind of flip it on its head and, and look at different ways that you can do it. Um, and so that's, that's probably my favorite part about this shot. And so when we posted it, everyone said, that's not possible. You can't do that. 
uh, well, what were your settings? And, and I was even showing pictures from the back of the camera as we were shooting it, and people were still saying, well, you must be in a different time zone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they just did not want to believe that something yeah. like this could happen in the middle of the day. It's The mechanics are actually simpler than, than what it appears. If you take out the flash and you just have the camera set for ambient, an overcast day like this was where it was drizzling, and that's why we have such fine particles. Um, it wasn't a heavy rain. It wasn't streaming. It was just a, a medium drizzle. And if you take out the flash, you take out everything, and it's just the ambient light, you can see that there are some, even some cheekbone shadows, a little bit of um, light shadowing underneath um, the chin. And that's just from it being exposed, nor normal exposure to what, for whatever the ambient was. And by having them juxtaposed against the dark trees in the background, which were maybe a hundred meters away, um, by having them, by having that dark background, I knew I could fill that that space between there with something bright, and I knew that the the rain was there, and I knew that it had been coming down this fine particle, and I had tested the flash earlier um, mm -hmm. just to see what it, how it how the, the spray appeared. Um, but this exceeded my expectations for how um, the rain appeared in that shot. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is. That's interesting because when you see those fine particles of rain, when it's not raining hard, you would almost think, okay, we can't do that type of shot yet. But people don't realize that by using that flash, you're really bringing out all that rain that maybe you don't even hardly see yeah. um, and, and allowing it, you know, that, that light to reflect through those raindrops and, and uh, you know, and the camera capture it. Grace, do you happen to have a behind the scenes on this? I know I don't see it in your bridge there, but um, would it be something that that uh, would be hard to find? I just sent it to you, so I can definitely pull that right up. And uh, I'll say too that the uh, when I when I thought about this shot, um, I tend to when I do range shots, I tend to go wide. Um, um, for a lot of shots and get a lot of the scenery, but this one I really wanted to focus in and get a nice tight crop of the scene. Um, so I went with the 7200 at 85 mil uh, to get more compression. And by having the flash behind them further back than right up, than right up against them, I could get a deeper column of backlit rain so that the, la the layers of, of rain would stack upon each other and you would get a a deeper density of of particles that are being lit up if that makes nice. sense yeah, yeah no absolutely ah there we go <laughs> check yeah. that out you can see it you know it, it's broad daylight um one one thing that really helps people to look at this image if you look at her dress how overexposed that is then you can see how dark the trees were in the background so this is just my cell phone picture um, but mm -hmm. it was exposing for the trees in the background, and so it blew out her dress. So you can really see how bright it was. And then we've accused that the oh, their their skin's not wet, their not their clothes aren't wet, so therefore it wasn't raining. Well, like I said, <laughs> it's a medium. It was a medium drizzle, so it really wasn't leaving droplets on their skin to the point where it was streaming off. It would yeah, yeah. It, would, it would blow in and blow out, would stop and start, but it wasn't to the degree that would cause discoloration on a gray suit or right. look like they just come out of the shower. Yeah. Oh, I love it, you guys. Absolutely love it. So on this one, it looks like, was it one speed light bare flash behind them then? Is that how that was shot? <laughs> yep, yep. I believe yeah. and I that we messed around with, um, you know, between the speed light and putting a, a, a grid on there. Um, mm -hmm. The grid just kind of. I don't think it made a difference. In it. Yeah, it honestly. Um, it, was, it, it was such a crop anyway. Yeah. Crop yeah. Anyway. Having the grid would only just cut out the sides, which were already being cut off by the crop. Yeah. Um, well, it. and and it goes. Well, it goes back to what I was saying about like like the difference between like speed lights and big lights and stuff. Having a speed light and being able to just pop it behind them, and even knowing, I mean, granted these aren't weatherproof, but they're weather resistant. Even knowing yeah. if you can just stick it out there for a minute, especially when it's just kind of, you know, the misty rain, yeah. um, it's a lot different than putting like batteries and large lights and things. And um, it makes it, it makes it nice and fast and portable. So can I, can I, can I quickly go back? 
equipment that we are yeah. we just stick it out in the rain and we haven't had one fail yet and, uh it's a magma it's the grips it's not the grip the uh it's the gels and the grids that that suffer throughout the rain because if we do decide that we need more weatherproofing than the than what's there in the flash we'll put a ziploc bag around the whole thing and then use the magnets and like the grid to hold it, to in hold place, it on whole place. place so it makes it sacrifice in the rain well <laughs> while everything else just stays dry and holds the whole thing together without blowing off or rain going like back up inside. Hey, Mag Magmod's happy to do that for you. <laughs> no, that's awesome, you guys. Can we can we see the final image one more time? Yeah. Yeah. And so we went through and, and um, edited out a couple droplets, you know, on her nose and chin and face and, um, but so for the most part, you know, when the when the light comes back and bounces off of them, it lights up a little bit in front of them as well. Um, but yeah. for the most part, this was almost straight out of camera. That's crazy. That's awesome, you guys. Love it. Thanks so much for showing that behind the scenes too. I think that helps a lot of people to be able to see, you know, just what it was like and then and then yeah. see how you can literally take a scene like that and just make it amazing. So we great try job. to try to remember more and more now. Um, for example's sake and to to teach that this here's the final image and there wasn't some witchcraft or sorcery involved it's here's what it was how, how it looks i was taken with my phone and here's how the image appears you you see that we didn't add or anything we didn't put layers of this and we didn't change the colors and do anything it's i try to do all that in camera i try not to cheat with um adding layers of this and and, and cutting this cutting the rain out of one and putting it in this that our their faces weren't perfect so so i'll fix it by by sloppy face or something but i try to get those mechanics right in camera to give myself less work down the road yeah no absolutely well you did an amazing job there so let's see what uh what else you guys have there i i see a few other images on the side yeah, um so I wanted to kind of switch over to this one um do you see it yeah, the, it looks like uh, a couple in the snow there, right? Yeah. Is so it this snow? Is snow. This is the first snow of the season. They, uh, the ceremony was 70 degrees, and it snowed that night. Um, oh, jeez. Really, really weird weather. But um, for them, you know, we constantly focus on trying to tell a couple's story um, with our images, not just do things because it's cool. And so... Uh, the groom's father actually owns that Rolls Royce. He he drives it, He dr well, for a long time, drove it for weddings. Um, so, of course, when their wedding day came along, they had to have it. And so we wanted to incorporate it in ways that were a little bit more unique than every other couple that had, you know, been driven in it. Right. Mm -hmm. I love it. And so so tell me about, I mean, it was the blue light, was that ambient light? Was the light inside the Rolls? Was that? Ambient as well, was that like a light on the interior? Tell me so, how you guys lit this one here. Let me tell you about this one because this is actually, um, this is very recent. Um, and this has come as a recent addition as getting the the colored gel sets, mag beam, uh, telephone and wildlife kits for this one. Um, and let's start. The only ambient light in this picture are coming off the Lanterns. The street lamps and the street lamps that are lighting the grill of the Rolls Royce. Uh, okay. That's it. Everything else is is artificial. So we're, everything from the light, our, our key light that's lighting up the couple, to the light that's inside the Rolls Royce, to the backlight are all artificial. And so it's three separate groups, three speed lights, um, to make this image. Um, starting with the most simple one, which is our key light on the couple, which is a one flash, one grid, um, open, no color. Uh, so that's just natural um, daylight temperature, light coming off of that. Um, probably coming at them from a 45 degree angle to me and uh, maybe 15 feet away to give them a nice little halo of light uh, on them. Uh, the light inside the Rolls Royce is a is going to be gelled with half CTO and has a smag sphere on it as well to give a little bit 
to allow the light to spread a little bit further and hit all the corners. Um, yeah. That's why that's why you can see like the pillars um, more lit up. And what was actually a cool effect that because of the snow and the rain that was happening, uh, it actually you could see the deposits of it on the windshield. And as the flash went off, it hits that, and that was unexpected that I was going to get that kind of goldeny um, light though on the windshield. And then from behind, we have a, from very, very far away, I think I, this was as far back as I could get the, the flash, um, but it was a mag beam uh, telephoto with a blue gel in it. Um, and that was so that I can get the most power because the you know how much we how much power you lose when you put the blue gel in. I needed the most amount of power and to basically telephoto it as far as I could um, to get as much a broader light. That yeah. See that the the light covers almost corner to corner in blue. Uh, as yeah. The particles of snow. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, you know, that's a great uh, way of being able to use that. So this, this probably wasn't the CTB gel, but more like the actual Creative Blue gel, as I'm guessing. Is that right? It was the Creative Blue gel. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And I, I've never thought about using the Magneen for that purpose, but you're right. I mean, if if you you know need more power out of those flashes, um, I shouldn't say more power, but more kind of focusing that light. Um, that that uh, that would make a lot of sense. I. I also, one thing I love about the Magneem is when you can put it that far away, then you can step back and take a wider shot and still, you know, not have to worry about having your flash to Photoshop out of your photo later on or, or yeah. you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So it, allow, it gives you that little bit of that leeway to be able to kind of move around your frame, whether you want to shoot wide or shoot, you know, um, yeah. zoomed in on your couple. So I that's remember, incredible. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was just back from doing our stage lighting. And knowing that um, normally blue gel tends to have about 10% or less transparency, and knowing that it, that the it's filtering out that much light, that you need to overcome that by um, using as much power as possible, or using as much power and having a means to move the light from A to B with a without losing the light that you would do if you say had it open or even a grid because the grid you're losing a little bit of light whereas the bag beam really helped to carry that light the distance that it needed to 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 light yeah. as much yeah. as it was did. You know what else I like about this image is the fact that you have the complementary colors. You know, you have the coolness and the the warmth. You get this contrast between the blue and the orange and and uh works really, really nice. So well done guys. Awesome. Can you uh let's let's pick another image. Let's see if we if people don't mind, we'll keep going. Carrying on with the mag beam, um, I wanted to just pull this one up. This was the first time we we literally picked up the mag beam in our mailbox on the way to this wedding. <laughs> so oh, nice. yeah, we hadn't had any time to really play with it, any time to really experiment. Um, but I wanted to just highlight a couple of key things that the mag beam allows you to do. Yes, and um, luckily we had a, we had the an opportunity in this space to use it, and this is normally a, um, a situation where had I not had mag beam, I would have used two um, grids to get that ten percent or that ten degree beam um, to to really hone in on the on the dance floor. And let me, yeah. let's, actually, let me go back further about how we do. Um, like reception lighting and dance floor lighting, um, we really have have switched from a philosophy of having open flashes and just trying to throw as much light on the floor and inside as possible to using gels, using modifiers to really control the light so that we're not wasting light or we're not um, unnecessarily splashing light on people, on chandeliers, on walls, and just flooding the image with it with unnecessary light and then i think that helps to um be consistent with our our brand of darker more moody uh reception lighting so going fast forward to where we have the mag beams here um i saw an opportunity to use it because from the flash that we see just off center um 
on the stand to the other flash, which is actually off camera here. Um, but if anyone could see the the bright person with the red Yeah, the guy in red there. He's yeah, just to the left here. He's right in front of it. So imagine that that pole is a little bit further back behind the DJ, um, behind the DJ stand up against the wall um, with the telephoto magazine firing uh, crossways across the dance floor. And so we have the distance covered was probably in excess of 30 feet, maybe more, um, mm -hmm. where in the past we would use two grids and have to really up. The we'd power. have to up the power into the quarter to half range yeah. for, for firing, which is not somewhere we'd like to be comfortable because we like to shoot a lot. And by shooting half or a quarter, we're really limiting the recycle time um, to seconds and where I feel like we would be wasting time. So by having a mag beam, um, in this instance, we're able to project more light onto the dance floor without, with less losses and keep the power down. So where we would have had to go to half or quarter, we were using between eighth and 16th to save on power and still end up with the same results. And it works really well for us, you know, being in the Philadelphia area. So we're shooting in a lot of very large ballrooms. Um, many of our couples have guest counts between 200 and 500 people. Um, so we're looking at these huge dance floors that we're trying to light from, you know, opposite ends of these venues. And the amount of light that needs to travel is, is significant. Yeah. There's also a uh, to, to note too for um, for those watching that if you look at the DJ stand that's on the left side of the image, there is a third light on a smaller stand. Uh, you won't see it, but it's our our mobile portable stand, um, and that's really there to to give kind of a third or kicker light to if um, if it lights directly behind the the subject, then we're in front then we will get a little backlight otherwise it just provides a little bit more light to fill in some of the gaps um in like in this instance and that that just has a um a grid on it to um to make the image a little bit tighter um and then this nice. image too and because we have a lot of um warm tungsten lights candles in here uh we're using cto we're probably using half ctos in this in this instance you know, one thing I noticed um, the, the first time I used my mag beam as well was actually the same type of thing. It was in a reception. And one thing I loved about it was, um, like you were saying, if you want to focus that light, you have to use those grids and then, you know, up your power. Or um, the other thing is I didn't like having my stands right around the dance floor, you know, real close to where people could trip on them or anything else. But I still wanted that focused light. And so because I didn't want to you got you got this great, you know, the walls behind them, for example, they got these the, the great colors on them, the blues and the purples and this awesome ambient light that the couple paid for, obviously, and you don't want to take that away from them. Um, and so by using that kind of that narrow beam of light, that focus of light, you're able to light up your subject, but you, you, you know, oh, what I was going to say about the bat mag beam is that you can move it back where your stands aren't like right around the dance floor. Um, yeah. And I found that uh, I just that alone, being able to move my stands, you know, back a distance, it was nice to keep it away so people don't trip on it, but also, um, it also helps a little bit with that inverse square when people start to dance and have fun. I can kind of move around the dance floor and hit a bunch of people. And because everybody's far away from the flash, it's not like one person's getting a lot more power than the other. So kind of a, a you know, plethora of little bonuses that you get out of it that I would have never thought of prior. So. Yeah. And I will say nice. too, we get a lot of questions on, you know, well, what do you do when the light is so focused on the dance floor if they move out of that light? Um, and that's really for us, like not, maybe not that exact example, but for having that kicker light that we can just throw on a pole and, and pull around. Um, yeah. We like to go around and, and shoot people, maybe like grandparents or people who are able to get up on the dance floor who are important to the couple. Um, just having this light that we can take around with us that we can throw around, um, shoot intros. If something unexpected is happening, shoot cake cutting, anything that's anything that's happening that's not on the dance floor. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That's awesome, you guys. So, so um, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Matt. Uh, I was just saying that uh, the girl is kicking me over here. I'm not. 
<laughs> I would like to interject one more thing. Um, yeah. I will note too, because um, as photographers, we there's we had to pick and choose what we value most in a reception. Uh, a lot of photographers know you can't have it. You can't win in every instance. And there are going to be sacrifices um, in the in the pursuit of trying to get something that you feel is more important. And well, our philosophy when it comes to reception is that we really, really want to get great dance images. And we want to get those moments that really are close and feel you know, amazing to our couple, to the families of them. And so we focus all of our attention on getting the dance floor right. And so that can yeah. make the cost of how the intros will look. And we don't publish a lot of un intro pictures, but ours are by no means great because we've dedicated all of our lighting to getting the, the first dance. Yeah. To get the dance floor right. Speeches, parent dances, yep. everything that comes that happens on so, the dance floor. So for introductions, yeah. I, I will have a flash on camera, wide angle, sphere on top, and my one uh, uh, flash on a pole. And that's what I'll be using to get my intros. And I might have, I get my, might get one or two shots per group that comes in, and that's it. I'm not going to have, you know, the entire lineup of, of every, like, you know how the, everyone knows how the, uh, some of the bridesmaids and groomsmen can, can do some ridiculous things and it can last for 30 seconds at a time. <laughs> if they get lucky enough to get on the dance floor in the middle of the dance floor where the lighting's right, great. Sometimes they won't. We'll try our best to get you know, a few good shots of the intros just to show a succession of things progressing through the day. But our focus was really to get the reception lighting for the dance floor, for the first dance and subsequent moments after that, to get that right at the cost of getting perfect intros. Yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I, you know, I think with regards to what you're saying is basically pick your battles. You know, if, if, if you want to have the best grand entrance photos, then make that your number one priority. And I, I think it makes a lot of sense. So I, I wouldn't apologize for that. <laughs> I would just own it. And be like, we kill it at dance photos and grand entrance photos. Well, we'll, we'll get them for you. <laughs> and you know what? I bet, I bet, yeah, I bet, I bet they look awesome too. Yeah. And it really comes down to, to photographers, you know, priorities and what they want. Um, there's no right or wrong way. It's, it's truly up to the photographer and, and what they want to capture in that moment. So I was just wanted to share a little bit of what our perspective on, on this particular uh, point of the day and how we light it. For sure, for sure. Awesome, you guys. Well, hey guys, our time is almost up, but, but can we pick maybe one more image out of there? Um, I can't, it looks really small, but it looks like there's either a couple or a cake. I'll let you guys choose which one. Or a cake. Aaron and Kyle or the cake? We should do a Facebook poll right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Couple or cake. Um, I'm gonna or, go or, with the cake. Okay, because, well, uh, say, or, or we could just do both of them. We'll just do them pretty quick here. We just don't wanna go too, too long, but. Um, I love this image. This is one of my favorites. It's it's classy and understated. It and it's it's simple in its execution too. It's um an either half or full CTO um and single grid flash to the left um from about sixty degrees of off the camera axis and to just give a little bit of light on the onto the cake. There's a lot of ambient light in this room. There's there are overhead recessed lights, there's candles, there's candles by the cake, fake candles on the ledge, um, LED lights, up lights on the wall, cafe lights, the whole works. So if you subtract all the flash, it really is a beautiful setting. And what we wanted to achieve was not to overpower all that and drown it out with, yeah. with our flash and to say, screw you ambient light, my yeah. flash is more but to really kind of accent it and to make a contrast. That's why the image looks, the, the whites look a little cooler than the surrounding um, oranges and yellows. And it kind of really contrasts well against having that purple uplighting in the background and orange cafe lights uh, directly above it. No, I, I love it. I love the symmetry that you guys have going on in that shot. Um, 
you know, just everything seems to just be very symmetrical on either side, you know, so looks really nice. Did you guys, the, the, the lighting, the color behind the cake, that is actually just the up lighting in the room, right? Yes, that's, uh, that's just, for, I think that was the DJ chosen package to have yeah. hand lights with lights on against the wall. Um, I will say though, it's, it's not uncommon for us, um, to get a pop a creative gel on a speed light and, uh, throw it behind, which will yeah. really, yeah, it gives you a good background. It gives you a little bit more dimension to the image. Um, and we always like to try to use, you know, the bride's favorite color. Um, we'll ask her, you know, or if it if it goes with the wedding colors, then that's a yeah. bonus too. And sometimes yeah, too, exactly. what, um, I might use uh, like a quarter CTO for the key light from the side and then um, up light some background with a, with a full CTO so that there's this contrast in, in Kelvin of you know like 1200 to 1500 kelvin that from the a difference then warms up the background a little bit and separates it from the cooler looking white cake yeah so so tell me matt what you mentioned in the beginning uh, say it one more time which modifier did you use on a flash for this one this was a, just, sing, a grid, right? just a single grid single grid single and a half, half cto nice love that shot Grace, you're right. That's a great one. So I'm glad we shared that. I'll tell you what, let's just, just, I, I hate, you guys have so many great photos. Let's just look at that last one as well. We'll do one more shot. You guys, you guys mind? No, um, we're here. Um, uh, this, this was a great example of being, running around with your head chopped off. Um, we had about five minutes, I, I, and I literally mean five minutes to do the full bridal party, girls, guys, and all of their portraits. Um, and it was, <laughs> It was insane. Well, this is also it was one of those insane. venues that have a, uh, they had three weddings at the same time. Yeah. And nice. the little garden area to do all of it. So there were coordinators upon coordinators upon coordinators, coordinating the coordinators to get everyone coordinated, coordinated <laughs> to um, take pictures at the right time. So there would be no overlap and no one would see each other. Yeah. So for this, it was all about the ambient light, really. Um, that was the only thing that we were going to be able to bring in to really kind of create this image. Um, you can also see, again, it was shot at 1.4. Uh, I, I definitely favor that. Um, Matt will use it when he wants to. But um, <laughs> <laughs> this is just a simple uh, softbox. Yes. Um, this is a Westcott Rapidbox Mini from Wright. Um, pretty close to them. So. I wanted to close so it could get more of a wraparound. Um, if you further away, it would have reduced the amount of um, light output, and it would have made the the source seem far and spill it a little and, bit more. And it would have, you know, would have resulted in a more pinpoint source than something that wrapped around them. And yeah. because she has a very poofy, we'll use the word poofy dress with a lot that's big, a big dress. A I wanted, so, I wanted something that could give a lot of coverage. Um, without the overpowering it so I wouldn't lose the detail that was there in the shadows. Um, and the, the lighting that, the architectural lighting actually came on on a timer um, right as we were- As you clicked the shutter. So there were <laughs> like there were like three practice shots before this that did not have this, did not have the lighting and it looked terrible. Wow. So they brought it up, it's like, ah, oh, some, some pizzazz, something that kind of brought the nature alive. And then adding the artificial light just, created this little cozy scene. Um, and I think I had in this to a, qu a quarter CTO to war just warm the image up a little bit and to keep the um, ambient um, tungsten up lights from being totally orange. Um, and I have been a big fan of using just a little bit of CTO in any sort of flash shot just to bring a little bit of warmth into the image um, because it can, yeah. the flash can be very cold and unforgiving sometimes. So just having a little bit of warmth and to match the uh, Kelvin and camera to really add something to the image that wasn't there. Um, and you see, when you saw it as it was. No, I, I think that's a great point. Cause it, 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 you know, that flash, when it comes out, it seems like uh, it almost has like a, a slight bluish tone to it, or I, I don't know. It sounds kind of weird to say that. I mean, it just compared to other light, you know, I'm yeah. guessing around 5,200 Kelvin, something like that. And being able to add that, that just a slight 
you know, like you said, a quarter CTO or something to bring in some of that warmth um, really adds a lot. One thing that I, I value in you guys' photos that I see a lot is um, not so much in the examples that we shared here, except for this one, but just on your website and stuff is you guys have a great um, perspective with regards to balancing ambient and flash. Like you, you, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll boost the flash power when you need it, but at the same time, sometimes you'll just use a little bit of flash. You'll still bring in that nice ambient light. Um, yeah. Along those same lines, we actually in, um, for this next month, this is something you guys should know as well. For the next month uh, in January, our contest in the Magmon community is going to be about balancing the flash and the ambient light together. So uh, Matt, you'll have to find a few images, Matt and Grace, and, and submit them for the contest. <laughs> yeah, we love that. So. Awesome. But, uh, well, guys, I, I super appreciate this. This has been awesome, you know, sharing some of these images. Um, go ahead and, and, Grace, let's bring you back on the on the screen there if you want to stop sharing there for just a second. And uh, I wanted to – I know you guys are going to be we're, – we're going to be together in Hawaii coming up soon. Can you tell everyone about that? And and uh, you, <laughs> you guys are going to be speaking there at the uh, – well, I'll let, you, I'll let you introduce it. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we're super excited. <laughs> So we're really excited. Um, speaking at High on Life, um, it is this mastermind of um, shootouts and community and partying and luau's, luau's and fire dancers. <laughs> we're gonna have fire dancers. Pineapple. Um, um, I'm just I'm just saying things Hawaii has. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're really excited. We're super pumped. Um, it's gonna be our first time. You know, really talking, really speaking. Uh, we don't. We have no idea what we're talking about yet. Um, <laughs> I assume it'll come to us when you know when we're ready. We're going to be a WPPI, so we're going to be really excited to you know meet people there and go on some photo walks and and kind of hang out. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely going to be it's going to be a great time. And I it's a it's March sixth, seventh, and eighth. And we've got a great lineup of speakers, and I'm really, I'm just really excited to see where it goes. That's awesome. Yeah, Jenna's been doing a great job putting it all together, and and, and the amount of people that the, the talent and stuff that's going to be there teaching is is awesome. I can't wait to learn. Um, yeah. And and you guys have so many things to teach and 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 share with others, so I'm sure something will come that will be extremely valuable. So I look forward to hearing it. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, you guys. Hey, well, and and. I just want to mention one more time, if, if uh, those who are watching live, um, Grace and Matt are going to jump in um, and check out the thread later on. I One thing that's kind of funky is that uh, when people are commenting as we're live, not all the comments stay in the thread. Like it, it will only show like four or five comments at a time. And then once the video has actually been processed through Facebook, it will eventually all those comments will pop up. So um, you guys might see some more comments later on tonight as Facebook processes that video and shares those. but. Uh, just want to mention that to other people as well, in case they see their comment and then all of a sudden it disappeared, that, that might be the case. Um, we, we definitely aren't in there deleting or censoring any comments or anything crazy like that. So yeah. we uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, Grace and Matt, for coming on and sharing uh, that knowledge and sharing your time with us. Absolutely. Certainly. Thanks for Been having us. Yeah, and, uh, and thanks for all you do for the Magmon community as well. I see you guys in there sharing and helping people out, so I really appreciate that. So. We're glad to have you. Yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I'll let you guys uh, have the rest of your night. And uh, thank you again, Grace and Matt. Appreciate it. Take care, guys. Thank you. All right.